and welcome back, everyone. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hi, Dotar. Hi, Lacoste. Hello, Grant. It fe feels like we're missing a couple of people, but uh, you, you know, know what? We're here to do our job, so we're going to do it damn well. And guess what, Lacoste? We already got a draft ahead of us. It is Ego Boys versus Thunder Predator. And hey, look at that, my friend. We got an Io Gyro and an Earthshaker AA. It is a exact... Is this a replay? It, I think it might be. They just changed the names. Valve's like, oh, God, change the names. We're good. Dude, it actually is. That Wait. And we swap it up, finally. We get a new hero. Centaur, huh? This is the hero that... Uh I don't know if we've seen too much out of him. It feels like this hero is really popular in the tier one scene in general. Yeah. Just what he brings to the table, builds all the tanky items. And uh, yeah, hello, Moxie. I think you just uh, went. Yeah, <laughs> there you are. Okay. Up uh, And so. Uh, and so it will be a tiny. So hey, guess what? You got IO Gyro, IO Tiny. On their side, you're you're bringing up Centaur. Yeah, I agree with you, right? It's like it feels like it is the top, like for tier one teams, that is the best off laner, right? It feels like at this point. Yeah, no. either him or Mars. A lot of the yes. uh, top tier teams are just picking uh, a lot of these two. And Tiny, this is a hero that is making a comeback, at least in South American yes. scene. They played as a mid, as a position four, sometimes even as an offlane. Welcome back, Dakota. Sorry, I got lost on the ship. Yeah, it's it's kind of okay. big. Yeah, I've, I've been on a spaceship before, so it's a little bit easier for me. I know spaceships, they're scary, man. They're I had scary. to go outside to use the bathroom and take my suit off, and that's like 45 minutes right there. What did I miss? Uh, we pretty much the first two picks on each side made it look like we were watching a replay, but besides that. That's what I, <laughs> I think here. Yeah, with yeah. Gyro, a, a Earthshaker. I've seen this story before. Tiny... Centaur Sven. Yep. All right. <laughs> but yeah. it will be. I'm excited to see. We finally get a tiny going through. I don't think I've actually seen Venom Wu Max. myself play in a while. And there we go. A of Venno. That's oh. different. Venno. Io. That's not enough lockdown. I feel like Storm is out. They banned it up because they probably yeah. realized that they're going to go uh -oh. for Venomancer. Yeah. Ember is still out. But uh, one hero that uh, is pretty popular in South America is Queen of Pain. Mm. I think they should go for it unless they ban it. They just could use some extra bursts, and uh, they also have a last pick, so they can decide what they want to go for. I like, I, even though you don't have the lockdown for the Venno, I do like Venno versus what Earthshaker, Centaur, and Sven is yeah. pretty damn annoying. Obviously, Centaur can ulti them all out, but you just can't fight when you're under the Venno, and that hero is so annoying to play against at like the 10 to 20 minute mark because. You know what he's going to do. He's yeah. going to sit in the lane and have wards, and you can't really do anything to All him. All three of these heroes love to get a blink dagger. It's really hard to get a blink initiation when you're playing against the Venomancer, yeah. so I, I assume Swen might not get one in this game. Centaur maybe too, honestly. We'll see. We've seen a few what Vanguard pipes. You like to get them, but if anyone doesn't, those two, who knows. Is this the only team that we've seen pick up the Venomancer before? I believe so. I think there was one, but we weren't casting it. Because oh, I, I, okay. I was looking at some of the, the Liquipedia drafts, and someone else picked it once. I would really love to see um, the Queen of Pain picked up for Ego Boys, just because I know Leo Style, that's one of his best heroes. Yeah. I've seen him just style They ban it kids. themselves, so. so. I guess they're not going to go for it. All right. So well, what do maybe you they still will. I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe they're like, oh, God, I told you to pick it, not ban it. Dude, I've oh, God. We've, we, people have done that. I know Tier 1 teams have done that before. They're like, pick me then. You just forget you have the last ban. We've, I did an NADCL a few times. Like, that's it, why you're not on a team anymore. That, huh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All the Sounds pros. Like meet me, puppy, <laughs> karaoke. We've all made the same mistake, you know? <laughs> we've all been. Puppy, karaoke. <laughs> grand, grand. <It's> problem. <laughs> you know, it happens. Now... You know, who do you pick? I feel on Thunder Predator, you definitely need you need a stun, right? As your last pick. Yeah. You definitely need something. Because right now, all you have is a tiny. Stunning mid laner. Hmm? To chew through. OD. Is that weird to pick up here? It's not a stun, but it's a imprisonment. It's okay with IO, but I don't know if you can chew through that whole team of I don't hate cakes. it. I actually don't hate OD here at all. It's, it's, another, it's an extra save, too, from your middle lane. They go Monkey King. All right. Monkey. Aggressive. Very aggressive, which denies pretty much every single melee hero middle, which is nice for them. Obviously, can't pick any of those. Who are we to look? Lena's banned, Quap's banned, Storm's banned. Hmm. You probably want something that does some more physical damage with what they have lined up currently. Yeah, but I think this is a good Wind Ranger game. Ooh. Oh, that's true. If they want to go for it. I know Leo Stad does play. He also uh, plays a lot of Death Prophet, which yeah. is physical damage with the ghosts. That 
Uh, you know, might be too you. cool down dependent then, though. I was going to say, you might be too cool to play Death you Yeah, he's too cool. You want to go for a swag here. They do nice call Lacoste. Wow. Nice. I like it. And this is... This is a very, this is the best level six like solo kill hero in the game. You get level six, you get a javelin. Whoever is middle, if they don't have die. a blink, they they're dead. They're literally just dead instantly. It's crazy. I like it. I actually, it's hard to bet against Io, Gyro, and Aveno. I really like those three heroes, and I think Thunder Predator is gonna. Pl ah, I'm gonna go with Thunder Predator just because I think they're a better team right now. Honestly, I love Ego Boy's draft, but. I'm going I can't with argue Predator. with my boy Grant. He's always right on predictions, except <laughs> when he's wrong. But yep. I'm gonna go. Yep. With this one, the Wind Ranger is going to have a really good game against Venomancer. So you really don't have any kind of counter. Same goes for Monkey King. Uh, he's not going to get. Uh, True. I mean, Maelstrom at one point, but you need to proc to proc through evasion. Yep. And uh, they have a lot of stuns. It feels like a pretty easy Dota to play. So you like Ego Boys? I like uh, All right. Ego Boys. All right. So you're disagreeing with Grant. Oh, yes. oh sorry. Sorry, Grant. We never yeah. listen to Grant. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. I know. No, I thought uh, <laughs> they had this draft. Sorry, I, I agree. I do think Ego Boys draft is better. I'm honestly just picking Thunder Predator because Ego Boys has not looked good in any game I've watched. That's the one problem. And Thunder Predator has looked like gods yeah. in a couple of games. I agree on that one okay. for sure, 100%. That Thunder Predator is, okay. uh, looks like a way better team. Yep. Moxie? Uh, I'm going to go Ego Boys. Okay. I like what they've got. I like what they're bringing to the table. I like that they've stuns. I think stuns are important. Stuns win games. What about you, man? I like Thunder Predator, but I think their draft is better. I'm like the opposite of Lacoste. I think they have like a lineup that they should be able to execute well, well with and just do well. Whoa, whoa. But whoa, I, you guys need to the, get the hell out the of gravity, here. So the gravity. Oh, no. Slam the button. Y'all got to go. We got a game. It's my boy Lacoste and I bringing you this excellent round one lower bracket matchup. Maybe I should move the camera. We have Ego Boys versus Thunder Predator. Yeah. If uh, you see us missing a kills, just inform you it's Dakota controlling the camera. Yep, it's Rob behind me. I'm doing me. all the production, all this it's cool stuff that you see on the screen. It's me and the, my boys from the production. But mostly me. Mostly you. Yeah. All right. Sweet stuff. We'll get into it here. I love it. The majestic centaur. I believe there's there was something posted about it not long ago. This is this is one of the best uh, looking sets. I don't know. The hair is gorgeous. The face though, ooh, this is like the definition of what we call a butter face. Have you ever heard of that? Butter, butter face. Yeah, yeah. Everything's Everything good. Butter face. Everything's yeah. good. Butter face. I like the <laughs> face. It looks like a you like the combination face. of keeper of delight and some ugly ass uh, goblin. I don't know. Some David Bowie labyrinth stuff coming out right there. <laughs> Tomato with the early tips and early shares coming out on this one. But as far as the laning assessments go, bottom lane. Don't see anything too far-fetched, but I jump to bottom once you say. And it's a bit of a tussle over dominance for the early bounty rune here. It looks like Cells trying to slide in from the side. But Radiant are going to go for three out of the four of the bounties if possible. I see purple at the top, and he is successful in grabbing it. They go for the bottom, and... They're committing deep. Nice Fisher block is there, and yeah. Frank will fall. Leo style with the first blood. Nice done by Windranger. She was saving the last hit, also a point in case he she needs to use a power shot. Sven did not want to grab it because he understands that the mid lane needs to get priority. So she's already using a courier in mid. It's an old talisman, a flask, and a branch. Easy gold for her. Congrats on your null tally. And we have the aggro radiant set up here coming out on the bottom lane already. Tiny looking to kind of disrupt the pull camp there. Speaking of disrupting pulls and disrupting lanes, Benjaz, Centaur, cutting mega deep here. Going against Wu and the Wisp to uh, try to get their own bit of CS happening there behind the gyro's action. Here we see Excel mid creep pull getting caught with the cold feet as he does the turn toss, which means he gets caught out and he's gone. Grab by Matthew. See you later, Excel. 2-0 now for Ego Boys. Banjaz, he is running really low. Tiny. Would has you say boots he's of speed. In yeah, problem? I, I think he's in problem, <laughs> he as I like to call it. Maybe, maybe even in the, problem. in the grave. Let's see. Aloise is giving him a long rope a dope and creating space, creating universes here. And that's that centaur. So bottom lane. Feels pretty unplayable. Venomancer already forced to go back to jungle. Also, if they want to do this kind of a thing where Centaur will play between tier 3 and tier 2 tower, you need to block this camp. This camp right yeah, here. So Gyro can't really drag the creep wave and farm both the lane creeps and the jungle ones. Yeah. 
So, now he's just jungling. A lot of people jungling at yeah. this moment. Uh, a lot of people have abandoned the lanes they were once assigned to. So we may see some heavy support movement coming out, certainly with these runes spawning out. Fortunately, it's an illusion rune, not very exciting early on. So Urshaker. Yeah, that's the worst rune it's you can get. Uh, last time you said that, they got a gank. I remember. Yeah, so. but he also died. Let's see what he can do with <laughs> level 1 Earthshaker against level 1 Venomancer. This is exciting. This is so freaking exciting. It gets more exciting when Tiny comes in and gets involved. Nice body block by Illusion. Let's look look at, at him it. off. He even got some Desecrate on Tiny with that Illusion rune. Real nice. It's taunting and rolling and screeching his way. Oh, body block from the Venomancer. The toss up and down, and they get Matthew down. Two, a lot two. of clownish stuff happening in this game from this the is early a, start. This is a bit of a clown shoey kind of yeah. a game to begin. We're and okay I, with that. And I love what Timato is doing on the bottom lane. He's not buying anything because he has a free lane, so straight into hand of Midas. Like usually, Sven is getting contested in the laning stage, but right now, if no one is in the lane, there's no point to get boots nor face boots or whatever. Yeah. Just straight into hand of Midas, mid lane. AA also on the side, able to, in the meantime, work with that side camp and get some solo XP himself, so it's a total win on the bottom for him. Yeah, here we scope out the mid lane action. Monkey King versus Wind Ranger, 17 to 15 at the time being. XP is also pretty neck and neck at the moment. But I know you guys were talking about in the drafting phase, how for Wind Ranger, once she gets that javelin, once she gets that level six, it is something totally different to yeah, look out she for. She needs to bring some mana region, some mangoes, some clarities, because she was playing really aggressive using that uh, Vendron, which was only level Tiny's one. Here. Tiny only for level the toss one back, as well. Not going to get it. Rotations are coming, and then rotations are canceled. But almost potential there to get the little toss back. It feels like they s just started TP right away when they saw the dots on the minimap. Yep. Oh, Excel. top lane. Dive past the tower. It's Ben Jazz in a bit of trouble here between the Gyro and Wisp. At the same moment, they're also able to get that grab, as you were mentioning, onto Excel. Ben Jazz is handed over. A one for one each way in two different lanes. Now Earthshaker is Zenvis. They saw him, but if Centaur just TPs, okay, he has a TP, Earthshaker only level one. Oh, Centaur's back, but he already showed himself in the lane doing a casual right click. No opportunity is going to be there, so. So we're going to see Gyro and Sven still at the top of the CS for the time being at 30 apiece. It's going to be five and a half minute to Midas by Sven. Almost level six at this point. Five minute bounties coming soon. AA already taking position, but Tiny should be there to meet him. No other real convergence. Oh, except I see Dyer at the top trying to get a hold of both. They're contesting bottom. Yep, as we see, we jump up and down. Monkey King springs in from the trees. They quickly break down the Iceman. They'll take that bounty. And it looks like same for the other side. What is that? Was it two and two? Yeah. It was three for one. Oh, three for one for the Dyer. Top lane is really hard because Earthshaker is only level 2, and even if he gets a good block, I'm not sure if they can score a kill because Ayo has bottle, he has a magic stick. They might need to even rotate one of more heroes on top to actually secure it. And AA running top right now, they have no vision of him. Hidden that way, has that point saved still. Seeing how he can best participate. Tiny had been floating around the mid lane on the back of a smoke too but no opportunity to kind of get the jump in yet. AA doesn't commit for the top lane. He's still kind of between the two camps and looking to do stacks instead. And I saw earlier that Tomato did finish that Midas on his fan. He's working his way through the jungle, leaving Venomancer to his own devices to farm up that much faster. Yeah, Venomancer got some gold. 17 CS, considering that he was tri land at the start, not much he can do besides playing that triangle. And uh, now he's getting levels. Uh -oh. Basically, you just want to get level 10 GPM on him. Got a hasted Monkey King on the prowl, able to come across to Mono, farming in that jungle, and they're going to be successful in bringing him down. Assistance, of course, coming in from Excel with that Tiny and the stun. Rotating in, it's going to be Matthew, not able to find the strike on the Fisher. They sidestep him a bit, toss forward. Oh, they can't quite get it. Leo style here trying to help out, and Matthew drops as well. It looked like another rotation Anyone was coming, and die? it was canceled. 
but this is turning long and awkward. In the meantime, Wu gets to take down a Ben Jazz in the top lane, certainly with assistance coming out from the gyrocopter, but we're still not done here in the bottom lane. They toss Leo up and down. He finally gets to take down Vixel, but Monkey King has been here for all three of the kills and gets the last hit on that three kill streak of Leo. That's the huge problem. Earthshaker's only level two, so he has one stun long cooldown. Gyro in trouble, top lane, just after taking down the tower, he is caught out between three. The return of Ego Boys from that bottom lane skirmish. Yeah, and they should try to make something happen on the bottom lane. Oh, he has a casual bracer, unkillable, sorry. You can't, <laughs> can't kill him anymore. One bracer on Centaur, and he's a god, so. You are going to need a whole lot of extra firepower if you plan on bringing the big behemoth down. Meanwhile, mid lane, they're making a move, trying to get the jump in on for Monkey King. He's immediately TPing out because no more stuns are there. He realized that Earthshaker is level two and just TP it out. Right in his face. Get away with it while you can. But yeah, some of these supports, you know, they're moving around quite a bit, meaning that they're not really uh, planting, getting the XP, and dragging their feet a bit when it comes to one getting involved. But all right, now that they have that more firepower, they toss back the big guy and easily surround him. They'll finish him off and segue this into a plus one tower takedown. Meanwhile, mid lane, Monkey King springs in. I see the Fissure follow up, the cold feet. And now the focus fire chase down, but that's not good enough. They quickly look to turn around. That lady is moonwalking herself back right now and she's dead. That was some fancy footwork right there. Draken two levels behind this Monkey King. Oh, he's trying to get AA. But does not see him. Yep. Also, Vendranger invested a lot of gold into these small items, two null talismans, magic wand, even a bottle, so that she does not have a javelin. If she had a javelin there, that's a dead monkey. Now pressuring through this mid lane. We see a lot of rotations from the Ego Boy side here now. See just <laughs> south. Oh, here we go. Gyro moving in with the call down. Full barrage of power, almost able to get the grab onto the Earthshaker. Only a stop for Monkey King. Now it's a bit awkward for the Ego Boys, and we could see Thunder Predator pounce on in. Ben Jazz soaking up a lot of the damage. He is just stutter stepping his way, trying to make it back. He will be weak and wounded. Meanwhile, we see Leo style on that Wind Ranger poking back Excel. That may be the end of this. I feel like at this moment, if. Ego Boys want to take a fight, they need to rotate Sven because Sven is their damage. Earthshaker not doing too much. He's way up there yeah, top. The supports are really under leveled at Excel, this point. Excel up to some funny business here. What is he trying to do? What are you trying to do? Trying to go in there for a clever toss back? Well, whatever it was, he pays the price. Meanwhile, uh oh, who's up here? Monkey King. Oh, he got him with the power shot, but he. Slip down. down. Yeah, yeah, somehow just jump down in the nick of time. That's Dota 2 for you right He's there. He's got to be careful. It's going to be another three for one trade in bounties. <laughs> Even with the two books, it's not going to be enough to bring them to level six on the side of Ego Boys. Oh, for these supports? Yeah. Oh, yeah, certainly not. There you can see the odds at the top, the Betway odds. Check it out right here. Curtain currently showing favorites for Thunder Predator, as I think a lot of us here would agree. Go get on that action right now. As we see the 2K advantage for Thunder Predator. Some very defensive vision at the moment for the Ego Boys, knowing that they may need to just buckle down on their half of the map. Build up that XP, but I already see Wisp Gyro kind of whole claiming their territory down here. Thunder Predator is just controlling the map right now. Yeah. With uh, their observer wards, at the one moment uh, they had four, maybe even five observer wards. One got denied. All right, now they're encroaching in on this mid lane, seeing a plump and juicy tier one tower ripe for the picking. But Radiant's here too. The only person absent at the moment I'm seeing is that tiny way up top. Thunder Predator inching their way back. Oh, Shackle right on the tether out, but he does manage to make it to the high ground. He's caught in a pickle though. Between the two, it has nowhere to go. So Wisp gets popped and he will be the sacrifice for the team. The rest of them quickly disperse. That's a four man rotation just to get to Wisp. Yep. Meanwhile, everyone else is farming. 
Yeah, they saw the Wispin problem and they just immediately got to the jungles, they got to the lanes, and they got right back to the farm. No hesitation there. Soon Venomancer will have four points in Plague Wards, then they will stop, start pressuring the towers. Their tower damage is a bit limited. Like Gyro, Monkey King, these are not the heroes that should siege that easily, especially against the Wind Ranger. Long range spell to clear up the creep wave. More defensive vision coming out from Ego here. Award to check their own side. I hear that got strength, but it's just to clear that big old meaty girth is stacked. Lots of money for Sven as he tries to finish up that Shadow Blade after completing the Echo Saber. Okay, so Bottom lane. Sven, it up. Stampede. Charging out behind the tower. Thunder Predator feeling a bit frisky. Nice shackle. shackle. Good connection, but immediate stun from the Monkey King. Can they get the finish onto the Gyrocopter here? It looks like they certainly can. Just run him down with little effort. Yeah, the rest, even if go ahead. they used three spells incorrectly, but they still got a kill because of that uh, nice shackle from Draken. Dire heading that way, but not quite close enough to bail out their Gyro comrade. Good call to action there from Radiant. Springing in before Thunder Predator could appropriately counter react. And now they have to kind of push off a bit. Surprising, the net worth is pretty close in this one. It's about 1K difference. Now, during the drafting stage, we discussed about the uh, Venomancer being the counter to any blink initiating heroes because of the wards. And now Sven has Shadow Blade queued up. I like that approach. It's kind of a more of SA thing as well. We saw Hector in the I think all, every single game almost, when he has an opportunity, he will get a Shadow Blade instead of a Blink Dagger. Not that I approve it in every situation, but uh, here I think it's fine. Like he just needs to have extra movement speed, extra tankiness, and uh, if you get the Gyro and Iro, Gyro and Iro. Okay. Gyro! Gyro. They love to push the side lanes a lot, stay together. So you have this AA global presence, and from just spend one stun from Shadowblade should be enough to actually get the kill. Another invis. Also, he should not be showing his shadow amulet. Like, you can buy it, but don't show it. So they can prepare with sentries and dust. Yeah. Like, you want to have... It's pretty much the same concept when you have... A, Blinking Bat Rider. Exactly. You want to make a good debut. Yeah. I know what you're getting at. You got me. But, uh, yeah, it's hard because Thunder Predator have been pretty good this game about having some vision across the river, you know, bringing them those little bits of intel. I mean, we see this one ward up here. May have just caught what you were talking about. You know, him walking under it at this moment will reveal the uh, Shadow Amulet, and that piece of information should be used appropriately here for Thunder Predator. Meanwhile... Monkey King casually keeping the pressure here throughout the bottom lane. Could always summon the recall. They make their stampede approach. Is assistance coming? I don't think so. Ice Blast is there and they shoot the monkey down. Meanwhile, up top, Sven charging forward, looking to assist. Oh man, two hard shots onto Tiny. A chase for the bounty One though. More head. <laughs> he dies right in front of the bounty. Sven's gonna be able to pick it up, but in that meantime, Leo style continues to go to work and they're able to get the kill onto the Wisp. Yeah, they try to make some play with the relocate, but uh, now they died. It's pretty even game, 11 to 10. Basically no network lead. Gyro only level nine at this point. While Sven is level 15, he's about to hit 15 after this creep camp. That's actually crazy. He's like five levels ahead, the core on the other team. Tomato has just been farming up this whole time, relentlessly. 2-1-2, two, and two. so some mild kill participation as well. I mean, of course, just witnessed one of them. The gyro, not much different. You know, two kill participation, one kill for himself. I guess they haven't really hit that huge stride they're hoping to get to. All right, drums complete. Venomancer still with about 1,500 gold built up for himself. Can be that just disgusting nuisance in that side lane, costing so much for the team to invest in jumping. Yeah. Also, I love what Wind Ranger is doing. Straight into MKB. Like with Javelin, you have enough solo kill potential and the damage, and you're countering a potential butterfly coming out on this gyro in the later stages of the game. 
Yeah, unless it's complete first, then I guess he could change his mind. But Butterfly had always been something cookie cutter for your gyrocopter, so it does take out a very potent item choice for him. And Ranger would be ready. They have Shadow Blade on Sven. Earthshaker will have a Blink Dagger after this creep. And someone should buy a smoke for him. Come on, team, please. I don't have enough gold right now. Yeah, he's got one in queue, but it looks like it may be on him until he gets it up. Oh, wait, yep. no. He is uh, being observed by Monkey King, though, who is thinking about jumping in. Oh, the quarry is there now, and he frantically jumps away. But, yeah, they, they're probably seeing the Shadow Blade there. Something I'm sure they already know of. But we'll see if, nonetheless, Tomato finds a way to make a good debut with that Shadow Blade. Nothing up in the uh, northern part of the map, though. A lot of Thunder Predator have migrated south to continue their farm. We see Gyro and Wisp still doing, well, Gyro Wisp things. He's going for the BKB next. And then circling around towards this mid lane. But no call to action really for either team at the moment. Yeah, both tier one towers still standing. Even the top one is there. Sven level 16. A bit afraid, I don't think he should be because there's an Earthshaker standing behind him. Uh oh. See a Venomancer slithering in a bit deep on this middle lane, but radiant avoiding it. Tomato does manage to get that top tower you were talking about. Right now it's a 2,000 effort lead for Ego Boys, but they have all the items they need to fight. Blink Dagger on Earthshaker, you have Pipe on a Centaur. They just need to make something happen. Smoke up and go take a fight. There it is. Okay. Ego Boys, they hear your call, Lacoste. Let's see what they can make out of it. They have Wind Ranger in the mid lane just dancing about. Baiting opportunity. She's able to clean out that mid-tier one. Dire R just around the corner here. Not smoked, but they are... Look yeah. like making an approach towards the bottom lane. Centaur is showing on bottom. I don't think that's an easy kill to get. 2,000 HP with the pipe and the stampede. They need to lock him down, maybe even use Monkey King ulti. They should know, though. If they dive in to that tower... Rotations and repercussions could follow, but maybe if they feel Centaur overextends a bit, they might be able to get the quick jump kill, or maybe Tiny rolls in there somehow and throws them back. But doesn't seem like there's any sort of easy approach for the Dire at the moment. But that also means that Radiant didn't get anything with that first smoke, so they just pop some more. second one. Pop let's some go. more of that purple stuff, boys, and let's see what we find. Yeah, that's not the target that you want to find. Yeah. You want something bigger. All right, they may have to settle for Tiny here, but Tiny is happy to gank, or tank the gank, rather. Yeah, with this God Strength, they should be able to take down a Tier 1 tower oh, on they the bottom found lane. They ping him. He's trying to rush his way out, but... They don't have ways to blink in there deeper. Well, Sven is just going to go for that tier one. Immediate cliff. All right, well, if Radiant don't get the fight they want, then push forward, take towers, see if the fight comes to you. Okay, rotations are coming. Monkey's waiting behind. He's looking to intercept. Gets the stun out. Pops out the ulti. Can they flank him from both sides? Well, Stampede's going to get oh, called out. Centaur goes for the run. But Ido. they get a beautiful find on the relocated Wisp. And it's going to be Leo who finishes him off. Now Leo, caught between the two, is going to get shot. Runs out the other direction. Right Just into out. the Venomancer ult. And, but you said TP's home and should be fine. Centaur not going to be as fortunate. Tries to go for the stun TP, but is canceled immediately. I think Ego Boys are fine with that. They just took a tier one tower. They took a fight without Sven's God strength and managed to kill the Visp, even though they lost the Centaur. Matthew, still smoked. That's the third smoke popped in the last three minutes. Do you go for the Courier? Courier, yep. hi -ya. Gets the Courier down, nothing on it, but definitely annoying and a little bit of extra money for Radiant side. But, you know, for our first, first big team clash, not too many casualties. Like you said, Radiant were able to kind of get what they need and get out with very, very minimal casualties. 
So the ball's still kind of in their court, and they continue to swell up in the net worth a bit. I know Tomato is king of the net worth right now, the rest of the team, about 4K net worth and pushing here. Wind Ranger, after finishing that MKB, is going for the other KB. That's BKB. Do you think we need a third KB? Monkey King Bar, Black King Bar. We lost KBBQ. KBBQ. That As an analyst. Work. Monkey, so I guess in that order, the next one should be Elephant King Bar and then White King Bar, right? White King Bar. Or what's the opposite of a monkey? Fish? Fish King Bar? I don't know. Caterpillar. Caterpillar King Bar. Doesn't really roll off the tongue too well, I think. Uh, a pause here coming out. We, we wow, I'm surprised that we didn't have a pause <laughs> at the start. <laughs> I was going to say, we, didn't we, even we notice. made it pretty far without the pause, so I think that's okay. But there is a little bit of one here for people just tuning in. You're tuning in to TI9 South American Qualifier coverage here, hosted by Beyond the Summit at our Space Hub. We have, this is our final series for today's South American coverage, and then I believe scheduled after this, we have a couple of bot ti matches coming your way so please stay tuned for that after bot ti we proceed with the final day of southeast asia qualifier action we'll know by the end of that shift the one southeast asian team to qualify and make it to ti9 and aa has that gpm talent almost level 12. he only needs to hit io with that blast gyro has a BKB on his own, 10 seconds, still didn't use it. I feel like Radiant should just try to seek for fights, but the problem is they popped all three smokes in the last couple of minutes. Yeah, they got real excited about that stuff. and Just blew it all in the closet. Unfortunately, they're gonna have to wait it out if they want sort of uh, any sort of unique approach. They still have one on Earthshaker. I'm not sure if they wanna use it right away. Yeah, I don't know. Dyer circling out the bottom half of the map. Looks like they still have one more bit of deep vision there that had not been scouted. So a little bit of information for them. Oh, missed that one. Tomato looks like he gets the catch on to Excel, who had been hanging around that top lane. And he just bought a blink dagger. I'm not sure if they were aware of it or he bought it right before he died. I feel like Dyer just died. Just does not want to take a fight right now because Monkey does not have a BPB at this moment. Nah, they seem like they're totally conceding from trying to get into any sort of fisticuffs for the time being. That is more on the Ego Boys to try to make happen. And they are pressing forward this top lane and allowing Tomato to get some damage onto that tier two so they can advance this game forward. Meanwhile, Dyer on the bottom. Just kind of creeping on forward. There are other Dire members coming in, invading Ego's turf. The center has been on the bottom lane for quite some time. Yeah. But, you know, there's not really any serious threat there. He can always just kind of call out the stampede if a problem's coming. Look at this. In the meantime, after denying that push or continuing that push top, they just find an opportunity to slide themselves into the Roche, a DD Wind Ranger, and a God Strength Sven to tag team it. Would you look at that? A double damage spawn at the Roche pit, and they get it. And they give it to Wind Ranger because you do not want to give Aegis to these transformation heroes like Sven, Dragon Knights, uh, sometimes even Lycan. TB. Yeah, yeah Lycan, sometimes even TB doesn't get priority. Now Ego Boys have the benefit of that extra life. So we may see Thunder Predator go into even more of a passive kind of position. I say that the only rambunctious one really has been Excel's Tiny. He's got the Blink Dagger now, so he feels good jumping into these side lanes quickly, bursting down the waves, and kind of keeping the pressure off their side of the map if possible. So that these two knuckleheads over here, we got Wiz Gyro. Still farming through the jungle as fast as humanly possible so that yeah. they can kind of swing with the best. Tiny's just playing a sacrificial position for right now. Yeah. Position five. I mean, the others of Wisp who has uh, farm priority on their side with the mech. He's just fishing for some information to see if they want to make a rotation on him while Jayo, Jayo and the <laughs> mech or Monkey King keep farming. 
Oh, it's a good the combination Gio. of words. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Gio. Gio and Iro. <laughs> All right. Well, after Radiant kind of linger around a bit, Thunder Predator roll on through, and they're able to get that grab at least on the Matthews or Shaker. It looks like Frantic AA trying to hide within the trees will also be spotted. But just a couple of supports from the Ego Boy side, the rest from Hightail it out of there. Happy to just kind of force Dyer to rotate all the way up. That's a 2k gold swim for them. They need Centaur to start these fights. With the Blink Dagger, if possible, Sven follow up. Just make space for Earthshaker. He's the third one who wants to initiate because I don't think he's gonna have a, an easy time. Also gonna answer really tanky build from him. Do they want to take a fight on the shrine? Yes or no, Dakota. They just it warded to the high ground. They know they're there. They're gonna jump it on up. Tiny dishes out what he can. Monkey King drops out the ulti from the trees above, but they quickly lose and get taken down the Tiny. Rolling is gonna be Venomancer, drops out the ulti. They swing down and Monkey's gone. Sven flexes on him a bit. Gyro tries to dish out the damage, but it doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. And Gyro is blown up. Wisp tries to tether the hell out of there. And Thunder Predator, frantic to make it away. Oh, nice. Not going to be successful. Stunned. Where's the shackle? I don't think you want a shrine. It looks pretty inevitable here. They lose their Wisp. Ooh, all radiant for this one. Can they Ranger get this Venom too? Chasing. Woo! Oh, no. Dyer, they made a huge mistake. They went on Vendranger. Tiny goes in. She has Aegis and the Shrine to fall back to. I mean, they had the vision advantage because of that high ground ward that they had near the Shrine and yeah. the Venna wards, but still, that's not the target that you want to go for. No. They didn't even get the Aegis down. They committed hard, but unfortunately, they got split up a bit, and they suffered from it. And with that success, Radiant are able to kind of move forward and take down what looks like a tier two tower for the troubles. And they're pushing their net worth lead up to about 10K with that tower takedown. Biggest advantage so far of the game. Once Vindranger hits level 20 with the invis, they can get pickoffs either with AA ulti, either with Sven, with the Shadow Blade. It's gonna be so hard for Thunder Predator to actually play the side lanes, unless they get a gem. And I don't even know who's gonna pick up the gem, who's gonna carry it. All right, Gyro Whisper creeping down this bottom lane, but trouble is lurking. Look at this. Oh, they have a sentry. sentry. There is a sentry. And it runs right past. They managed to make their movement quickly, blow up the Wind Ranger, taking out the Aegis, but now Hell is unleashed. Jump in from Matthew, catches the two. They quickly look to burst down the Tiny. Monkey King also in the mix. Gyro goes down first. Monkey King tries to hang for a bit, but uh, he has to run it on out. It's Sven, he's the big bad one right now. That's a buyback from the Wisp. Oh, he gets, well, another nice shackle. Die back out. This is gonna be a full team wipe, actually six, four, zero. Don't Courier. do this to Frank. Uh, uh, oh, the Did you actually know there. that Frank's name is Frank? Yeah. Meanwhile, yeah, <laughs> Tiny's gonna get uh, a solo kill on AA. Well, at least it's something. 400 gold in his pockets. <laughs> yeah, but the whole rest of the team suffers so much. They don't care about Monkey King's ulti. He does not have enough damage items at this point. Centaur with the Crimson Guard. He's just keeping them alive. Also, Gyro's flak cannon is not that effective. Gyro just doesn't seem that effective at all, to be honest with you. I'm not seeing Gyro do any real damage. Everybody on the side of Eagle Boy feels tonky as hell right now. And they're just flexing off all that damage. There's a toss back. Are you sure you want to toss Sven? But so far, Sven doesn't seem too troubled. Pops a BKB, runs it on out. Fissure right, for the secure trip away. They, they're chasing. Someone's sleeping on a shrine. Nah, just kidding. Bounties, that's why. Yeah, frantic to try to get a hold of them. But it looks like Radiant might grab all four. Yep. They're not done yet. Oh, not going to catch the Gale. We'll slow him with the ward, but Wind Ranger's here. Stampede? They want to keep her, shake her alive. Still he's, chasing, he's AA still ulti flying. Chasing. All right, I think at this point, Dyer understand that there's no catch here. As we can see, the odds have dramatically changed. I'm not too surprised by that. This one is feeling uh, 
pretty favorite for the Eagle Boys, at least with their advancement. But they're not out yet, Lacoste. Still opportunities there for Thunder Predator. It's just a hard road, especially if your Wind Ranger is killing your Wisp right in front of you. Oh, not done yet, though. Oh. Chase way too fast. 588 with the Wind Run active. But Two they charges. get the Gale. They get the Venal. Can they finally bring her down? Monkey King committing the ulti with Centaur jumping into play. There's the slide out, though. Still Radiant, not phased. They managed to just shrug off the trouble and make a clean answer in problem, as we call it. Oh, the, if one more tick, he would have died. I did my math. Oh, yeah, there was a level two Ice Blast as well. But unfortunately, yeah, not quite enough. Wind Ranger is extremely tanky to take down. A look at 2,000 HP with that Agonim oh. Scepter. The Monkey efficiency. King. Oh, nice dodge. Oh, don't Fisher. matter. Pretty clever. I like Tomato, max efficiency for that. Leads in with the attack first, but. Tomato's had a really great game. Yep. Almost level 25, died only once. He's pretty much fully jacked. Has to buy only ultimate orb, then he's six slotted. Then we're gonna see some eggs, some moon shards, some refreshers if needed, double damage spawn on bottom. Roche may respawn in 20 seconds. And reminder, this is elimination series right now. The loser of this of this series, their TI dream is over. They gotta wait till next season to get that new fresh start, maybe even a fresh roster, I don't know. It is shuffle season after all. Well, shuffle season, you still need to wait for like two months to start. You wait till after the hiatus, after TI. Yeah, of leftovers course. of the leftovers. And leftovers then you make of the leftovers, team. yeah. Anybody who's at China, TI will get the first shuffle action. Okay, here we go, Radiant. Don't think they want to lollygag around too much. They understand their power advantage and they would love to kind of keep this momentum going straight to a game two if they could. Centaur is just laughing at their face right now. He really is. He's just confidently standing out in front. This is when the Wind Ranger slides into play. She's just going to work on this gyro. Wisp is like, man, I'm trying to help. I'm tethered to you. I'm giving everything I can, but it don't matter. Sped, meanwhile, swings it from behind, and they just evacerate the Venomancer. Monkey King trying his best, drops down the ulti, welcoming Sven into it, but Radiant are happy to wait on the outside for them to Big finish. Big AA ulti. Flies through. Not connect. It does hit the Monkey King. Okay, well, Sven just makes monkey me out of him right there. Okay. Yeah, no, sorry. You're not going anywhere. It was a good relocate from Io to save the gyro there, but uh, I don't think that's enough at this point. Also creep wave, top lane pushing in, same goes for this. bottom. Oh, the disrespect. I mean, they are killing the gyro in front of the Wisp, Lacoste. Lacoste, they can't do anything. Yeah, that's just double damage, Wind Ranger. Wisp pretty much used all his heal, a mech, uh, some urn of shadow charges, a bottle. Still keeps him alive long enough to survive through the initial burst. We didn't even see Echo Slam being used. Yeah, not of these recent fight, no. He still has it in the pocket, ready to go if they want. Yeah, this has got to be tough. Thunder Predator, obviously, just getting back out there, getting back to the grind, trying to pick up what they can to make this right. They do not want to risk anything at the moment. Roche is up, so I assume they're just going to heal up, go into Roche pit, and uh, try to finish the game with Cheese and Aegis. Yeah, we'll see if they head that way. Someone needs to outpush the top lane. There's a huge creep wave coming. Yeah, something to definitely take note of. And uh, something that, well, Wind Ranger seems to be taking care of right now. Tomato's still hanging out pretty deep. Him and Centaur scouting things Centaur's out. alone. Yeah. I don't think he cares at this point. Has a four staff as well. They're gonna pick up bounties. Wind Ranger needs to pick up the top ones. So it's gonna be again. another four for zero. Get them all. So I guess if you're Thunder Predator, you are, I don't know, hoping you maybe can make a unique approach to this Roche. But, you know, you got Guardian Matt there watching out. You know they got the vision. Doesn't seem like they're even gonna bother. Frantically looking to push out the bottom lane as much as they can to at least match their top lane advancement. And uh, hopefully can stall things out as long as possible, but... Yeah, at this point they just want to cut the creep waves, uh, 
drag this game. Gyro, maybe get a couple more items. Monkey King as well. I'm not sure if that's actually possible, but uh, that's their best chance. And suddenly, what is that? 24k network advantage. Okay, here we go. Leo style in first, looking to take it to the Wisp. Bop, 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 boop. Another He's gone. Dyer now frantic, trying to make it away. They hide within the trees, like tree people, to find the safe way back home. Okay, okay, good damage. All right, Leo style, you're getting a little too confident now. Jump in from the Centaur to bail out his lady, and she's able to step back, get the shot off. But uh, hasty escape. And Sven is on a different side of the map. That Silver Edge running out. Man, if he had Silver Edge, that's a dead gyro for sure. Where's Cheese? Cheese on Centaur. He doesn't even have it in the back. He has it in the backpack. A casual racer, still more worth it than oh, Cheese. Oh, he just sold it. <laughs> no! Yeah, I like that bracelet. It was pretty good. He was struggling. My man was struggling at start so hard. Bracer face boots, but to still managed to recover. He's almost level 25. Yeah, he got that Reaver now, obviously. In the uh, tanky diversion for the team and a stampede to rely on. But here we go, Radiant outside the front door. And they begin sieging away from the low ground here. We'll look to Thunder Predator to see what kind of defense they can pull out to stop the siege on. And that should be their tier three. Radiant content with that. Matthew also still has that blink echo. Something that you do not want to sleep on. Yeah, it feels like he didn't even use Echo in the last 10, maybe even 15 minutes. Yeah, so they don't need it. He just needs about. to keep them locked down with the Fisher. Stuns out. Here we go. Tiny stepping outside. Toss inside here, and it's spent. Good grab. In the meantime, though, Leo Style is able to get the takedown of that Tiny. Tomato frantic to run and make it away on the back of the BKB, but he is finished. 100 seconds. Nice little toss back sacrifice, I gotta say. And that is a nine times kill streak. Gonna hand over to Frank and the Venomancer. Still, though, action hasn't stopped yet. Guy looking to commit on in. Big Venomancer. There's the big echo. There it is. Catches both the gyro oh, and the wisp. Beautiful shackle lockdown. They pop the ball. They look to go for the gyro, but the Fissure separates them. They turn back and said, looking to go for the Veno. Veno slides up to the high ground, but Leo's not done yet. Chases him down, shackles Wait, him up, hits him with a taunt. see that shackle. That's an invisible shackle. Aghanim's actually gives you invisible shackles if you didn't know. We're not done yet. Look at gyro to the top. Woo! Sees the approach of the Wind Ranger. And that's a buyback of your Venomance. So there's a buyback available on the Wisp, but not one on the Monkey King. Jumping again from Excel. Toss up and down. Can't quite find his target. I'm not sure if they want to take this fight. Still minutes and uh, 40 seconds on Aegis. I can't believe they actually managed to blow up Tiny with uh, their limited lockdown. He could have popped the God Strength, get some extra you mean HP, yeah. yeah, and uh, still live there. That yeah, definitely slows things down a little bit for the Ego Boys. They are only able to get a Tier 3 down with that push, with that Aegis push, and I think it's going to cost them their Aegis now. And Thunder Predator have been granted more time to play. That's a full heart on a Centaur. Also getting closer to oh level man. 25. You know, you know what's up? This is a meme, but... Uh, Level 25 on Centaur, it's always better to get the Hoof Stomp duration, but against the Gyro, with his Flak Cannon, you can actually kill him if everyone <laughs> just stands there with Retaliate damage. It's 40 minute bounty time, and the bounties, double damage. They're worth more every time. Oh, I really want to get in on this. Picks it up. Double Another damage. double damage. What is this? Oh, yeah. The, she's going to be very tempted. She has found a backliner and an easy kill on the Ven or oh, on the Monkey King. Sorry, I thought it was a Venomancer. Monkey King. Annihilated. Dakota, they have two double damages. The Centaur is going to hit. Once he <laughs> pops that Retaliate, it's going to have 700 damage. And, uh, well, that's Monkey King dead and no buyback, too. He's out for a minute. We know what Centaur, Centaur can do. He can pretty much hold down this bottom lane by himself if he'd like. He is drawing Gyro Wisp out oh for yeah, a bit. Oh yeah, kill that Centaur. 
<laughs> Careful there. Yeah, Radiant not, not jumping the gun, though, at the moment. They are full split push mode. They don't know that Monkey does not have a buyback, and now he does. Just yeah. jokes on you. Just got enough gold, it would appear. Matthew flings himself back out. Looks like he does have that Agnum. So slide into three-man stun. Almost three-man ice path. Call down, turn around, looking to go for the Centaur. He's big and tanky. Wind Ranger in the meantime looking to snipe down that Venomancer. Can't quite get the catch. Oh, no, he can. The AA ult did hit that Venomancer. So it takes him out. And he's dead with no diet, with no buyback on the Venom. 80 seconds. It's always a pleasure to watch an unkillable Centaur. Look at this damage. Look at the health. He's just back to full now. That heart regen. What's his magic resistance? 60% and 59% physical resistance. Move slam on the gyro, follow up stun. Whisk goes for the relocate, but it's too late. That gyro is gone. And I think that might be game. I mean, you're looking at gyro. No buyback. Tiny buys back. Oh, you it's don't just the three of them, though. That's it. Can they do it? I don't think so. Looks like they have already lost their wisp. Monkey King soon to follow, and that is the G's. And those mean the game's over. Yep, <laughs> G's are dropped. <laughs> G's were <laughs> dropped. And Sven is one of the, all over the few place. heroes who can stand in uh, Monkey King ulti, and he does not give a damn about it. Man, this Sven Dranger last pick really paid off. She basically destroyed him alone, even though Centaur didn't have a good early stage. He managed to make a huge comeback and just laugh at their faces in the end. Nice hat there, Grant. Uh, thank you very much. That was also <laughs> a very nice game from Ego Boys. They, as you said, early game, I was like, uh, or, w what are you guys doing? And then Ego Boys, they just end up dumpstering them. We have a nice little long time, and then Centaur becomes unkillable. He was just sitting on a bottom lane, farming, yeah. uh, getting big, Chilling. first item pipe, then... I what don't know. Do? It felt like uh, they didn't do too much. Gyro, Gyro and Io, they keep uh, farming the jungle, but Sven was five levels yes. ahead of Gyro. He was so far ahead in terms yeah. of net worth, too, and it just it felt like the Gyro just couldn't find the footing to really catch up. Sven got that immediate odd. Midas and then farmed through the bottom lane, ditched that lane, went top, had all that lane to farm. That's where Centaur took over bottom and became huge. And yep. uh, at that point, even as a twofer between Gyro and Wisp, they could never catch up to where the Sven was. It's crazy. Yeah, and I think the, the biggest thing for me is you, you have Katara on your team. This dude likes to play by himself. He likes to be swaggy. When you do an IO gyro, it means there's always going to be someone playing with him. So it, you, you always have two heroes, one place on the map. You want Katara to be making solo plays. Like, he is that dude that does stuff like that. And I think picking an IO gyro bottlenecks Thunder Predator super hard. So yeah. I'm looking at this game. They played okay first 10 minutes. They didn't. I think you, you switch up the draft here. No IO gyro for them. That's got to be confidence for Ego because it means oh, they don't yeah. have to ban the Wisp or, or just have like that. Gyro without Io. Oh, God. No, it is. Nope. The, worst, nope. the worst carry hero. <laughs> like, yeah, that hero's, God, he's so bad by himself. I don't know how that – it's still a bad hero even with Io, I think. But, you know, occasionally. It can work, though. We saw we saw HFN it pull it off earlier. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Definitely it can. It just really depends on, you know, how your laning stage goes. And, and Leo style, he uh, popped off. That dude, he – I mean, you, you mm. called the Wind Ranger last pick, and it, it worked out perfectly for him. That hero is just so good at, like – Level six, right? When you get it, you have kill potential. Once you get like level eighteen, you get an ag, you get MKB. You're just an absolute machine. She yeah, was just slaying in front of everybody. Yeah. He made a couple of mistakes in the laning stage, so he was playing uh, from behind. But uh, after that, he his shackles were on point, especially on uh, Gyro and I. I also think the bottom shackle near the tier two tower will change yes. things a lot for them. It that oh, man all takes one stun, right? Stuns win games. That proved it, right? I there. said that in the yeah. draft. Yep. And Excel, and that's another thing. Uh, Dire, they once again, they just didn't have any stuns. When your only stun is like a rocket, a tiny, which isn't even a consecutive stun anymore, and a boundless strike, you're struggling with stuff. Like they couldn't catch people at the end of that game. You saw Centaur run away because no one has a stun. I can't Exciting. believe they. Uh, sorry, Dakota. They Exciting. They killed <laughs> uh, Sven, a full <laughs> HP Sven. Yeah. I think he was full HP. Uh, there's, I don't know, uh, with just one toss back. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yep. Good team play overall. Uh, I still think Thunder Predator is a better team because Ego Boys seemed a little bit uh, tilted at the start of the day because they lost 2-0 and uh, not lost. They, they got stomped, especially mm. the second game. And yep. uh, I'm glad that they managed to make a comeback.
For sure. All right, awesome stuff. Great game one for Ego Boys. It is a best of three after all, so we're going to be cutting to a break. Before that, though, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors who help us build this hub and make it happen. Helping us get energized is Monster Energy Drinks, and, of course, a shout-out to Sennheiser, the official audio partner of Beyond the Summit. Make sure as well you scroll down below to check out all the cool Discord Nitro information and a way you can get some free stuff in Paladins. Cut into a break. When we come back, more South American Qualifier action. See you soon. Oh, yeah.